Surprise! It's not a Full Metal Jacket video. I'm actually making a Friday the 13th video. I told everybody I was making a Full Metal Jacket video, but it's Halloween. Ralph Seppi Jr., film critic, filmmaker, artist. He'll recommend you films so obscure that you'll think he has a bigger penis because he's seen more foreign films than you. Get on your knees because it's time for Ralph Recommends. The series of films I have chosen to talk about this Halloween is the Friday the 13th series. We're actually hiding from Jason Voorhees right now. I'm hiding in the closet. I think if you have a general knowledge of horror movies, you have to know who, who Jason Voorhees is. There's other killers. There's Mike Myers. There's uh, Freddy Krueger. He's been in way more movies than any of these other guys have. I'm gonna see if there's a light in here. And they all did pretty well. I own all the Jason movies. Uh, the good ones and the, the bad ones. And yeah, I was just hoping we could go through them, talk about how good they are, some of them anyway, and then we could talk about the ones that are bad too, because why not? That's fun. I don't want to make this show like we only talk about good artsy-fartsy movies, because there are great movies like Dance of Reality, but there's also great movies like Friday the 13th. And you weren't in Son of a bitch. I love the title sequences of these movies. They're so goofy. What's with the explosion? So I rate the Friday the 13th movies on a very different scale. Because there's um three things Friday the 13th fans are looking for. You gotta judge these movies on three things. Tits, kills, and entertainment value. And this all adds up to a total score of 10 and we will rate the movies accordingly. They made these movies quick and cheap, too. That's the genius of it. Backstory of Jason Voorhees is that he was some disabled kid who was bullied, and then he drowned in the lake. None of the camp counselors went to go save him. So his mother, a few years later, goes to the camp and kills some camp counselors for some reason. Anyway, one of the camp counselors kills the mother, but then Jason Voorhees comes back because it turns out he's a zombie. And he kills that girl who killed his mother. And then he takes revenge on all these camp counselors. And that's the premise of Friday the 13th. So Friday the 13th Part 1 was just some random horror movie. It was like a murder mystery. You didn't know who was killing the people. Turns out it was Jason's mother the whole time. Jason's not in it at all. It's just his mom. And this movie is slow as hell. You, you can see how cheap it was to make, because they just pad everything out. It has to be 90 minutes. Just show a car driving on the road. Have the opening credits go on for like five minutes. It's just a blank screen with text. The kills in this movie are actually really good. There's this iconic scene where Kevin Bacon is killed. That's some really good makeup. Tom Savini actually did the makeup. He did the makeup for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. He did it for Day of the Dead. He was only the makeup artist for part one and part four, but those are two of the best. Then you got this like moronic goofball old man character who's like, I, I, I don't know what the hell his deal is. I'm a messenger of God. You're doomed if you stay here. But then they say his name, of course. Damn it, Ralph, get out of here. Go on, get. Yeah, Ralph. This place is cursed. Cursed. Can I ever catch a break, really? Guys named Ralph are always like just weirdos and like degenerates and pedophiles and rapists and killers. And it's like, can't someone be named Ralph and just be like, I don't know, a Brad Pitt character? Shut up, Ralph. It's got a death curse. I'm giving the overall entertainment value of this movie a uh, two out of four. <laughs> Now we're getting in the swing of things. Jason is in this movie. He doesn't have the hockey mask. At first, he just has a burlap sack. He also sucks in this movie. <laughs> he 
gets the shit kicked out of him. That adds a lot to the entertainment value of it. But you have loads of great characters. You have this dude in a wheelchair. He's just like a cool guy, you know, he's hanging out in his wheelchair. And you're like, you know what? I really hope he doesn't die. Jesus Christ! Holy shit! Holy shit! I gotta give the kills a three out of four, just for that one. Just for that one. That kill's awesome. Friday the 13th Part 3. This is when Jason becomes Jason. He gets the hockey mask. What made this one stand out is, um, the 3D. This movie was released in 3D. There's a guy with a yo-yo who's, like, swinging it at the screen. And I can imagine the whole audience is like, OH MY GOD! But that ends up making the kills more creative. Because I imagine the guys making the movie were like, Okay, we have to incorporate 3D into this movie. What kills can we come up with where we have an excuse to just, like, do this? Whoa, something flies at the screen like that. What, a little bit of nipple? What is that? Come on. I give the nudity a 0 out of 2. And the overall entertainment value is really high. Uh, lots of good characters, lots of funny moments in it. I give the entertainment value a 3 out of 4, bringing it up to a total of 7 out of 10. This is one of the best ones. This, this and Part 7 are my favorite. Part 4 is just a really good Friday the 13th movie. Marty McFly's dad is in it. He has the best dance scene ever. I wish people still danced like that. Can we bring this back, kids? What makes this one fun is that you have this kid living in Camp Crystal Lake who like makes these masks and he fights Jason at the end. And the fight at the end is awesome. That's Tom Savini doing the makeup again. The overall entertainment value of this one is a 4 out of 4. Then you have Friday the 13th Part 5. So in Part 4, Jason died. Sadly, but in part five, is he back? It turns out in the beginning of the movie There's this fat guy who eats chocolate and this guy's like chopping wood trying to ignore him But eventually he can't and he just kills this guy oh, God. Oh. Why are you opening the blanket with the kids there? Why does everyone gather around? Bunch of pussies. Let's see what we got here. But this paramedic is related to this kid, so he kills all of these other kids. As, as hated as this one is because Jason isn't in it and it's just an imposter, and they end up bringing Jason back in the sixth one even though it makes no sense. I still like this movie. It's not one of the best Friday the 13th movies, but it's still funny. <laughs> you big dildo. Eat your fucking slop! I'll give the entertainment value a 2, I'll give the kills uh, a 1, and I'll give the boobs a 2. And overall, you, you got a 5 out of 10. So, in part 5, there's this dream sequence, because the kid has a dream sequence where Jason comes back from the dead, from a grave, and kills two guys. And that scene is so silly that, of course it has to be a dream sequence. Of course it is. But by part 6, that literally just happens. That just happens and it's real. Jason's back from the dead. He kills camp counselors. And on top of it, you have Tommy, Tommy Jarvis. That's the kid's name from part four. And he's also in part five. He's back in this one, full grown man. And he's ready to kill Jason. So you got Tommy Jarvis fighting Jason. You got Jason killing camp counselors. He's unstoppable now. Remember before when he was just a dude who would get hit and knocked over? Now he's an indestructible monster. So you got a great story already. You have these super dumb characters who come out of nowhere and serve no function in the story. They're just there to get killed. And it's funny as hell. Overall, part six gets an eight out of 10. That's a really good score. Part six is one of the best ones for sure. Part seven introduces telekinesis. This girl, has telekinetic powers for some reason, and she goes to Camp Crystal Lake to... Well, we've done all we can do for her at the hospital, and she just hasn't made enough progress. I know it's tough on both of you to come back here, but trust me. Sure. Excellent kills. Even though they were cut down. The studio really cut down the blood and gore because the MPAA threatened to give the movie an X rating because of how violent it was. 
But even so, the kills are still pretty good. There's this one where a guy's head gets crushed, and in the movie you only see a little bit. When you look up the full version, Jason literally pops his head like it's a like a fruit. Yeah, there we, there go. we go. Isn't that nice? Look at that. It's beautiful. beautiful. Now imagine little snap crackle pop and some squirty sounds. Yeah, Wouldn't that be attractive? You? you have one of the most iconic kills in the series, the sleeping bag kill. You could tell that there was someone actually in there, and he just swung at a tree. That's a really well done kill. In the full version, like the uncensored, bloody version, he keeps hitting the sleeping bag against the tree. It looks really fake, and I'm glad they didn't go with that. So that's actually a case where less is more. And then you have the window kill. And it's a good kill, although the impact when she lands on the floor, it's a little soft. It doesn't look like she fell from a second story window. I want to talk about what makes this movie, what makes it my favorite personally, up there with part 4, is the fight at the end. You got Jason fighting a telekinetic girl, and he's getting thrown through walls and blown up. One of the most epic duels of the century is this girl versus Jason Voorhees. This fight is even cooler than when Jason fought Freddy. have part 8, which sucks. It's considered one of the worst of the series. And it was so bad that once it came out and flopped, Paramount sold the rights to New Line Cinema. Part 8 is subtitled Jason Takes Manhattan. So you're expecting the movie to be set in Manhattan. And some of the movie is set in Manhattan. The opening credits are set in Manhattan. The last 30 minutes are set in Manhattan. But the rest of this movie is on a boat. And it's so boring. And there's this whole stupid backstory where the lead girl has this father figure who, like, pushed her into a lake and Jason drowned her. It's so dumb. They don't actually get to Manhattan until an hour into the movie. And it does get better once they get to Manhattan. Because it's fun to see Jason just chasing them around the subway. And then, like, they, they push Jason into the third rail and he gets electrocuted. There's like fun, goofy stuff like that, just watching Jason run around New York City. But once you get past that, it's not a very good movie, and it's not even a good Friday the 13th movie. The kills are really bad. Really bad, except for one. And that's just so goofy that it's funny. But it's not like a well done effect. The effects in this movie are... <laughs> Supremely bad. I mean, you compare Tom Savini's makeup work in this series to this shit. What did you get? Like a pillow? I put a shirt on it? Just look at the makeup on young Jason. Gonna give the entertainment value a 1 out of 4. Uh, I'll give the kills a 1 out of 4. Because I liked that one kill where the guy got his head punched off. And the nudity is a 0 out of 2. This girl gets naked, but it's a body double. And, oh god, this is so bad. So like I said before, New Line Cinema bought Friday the 13th. They bought the rights to Jason from Paramount because Paramount was done with him. New Line Cinema, though, also owns Freddy Krueger, so they were hoping to bring them together. So Jason Goes to Hell was supposed to, one, re-establish Jason Voorhees, and two, it's gonna set up a Freddy vs. Jason movie, which is cool. The issue with the movie is, it's awful. There's not a single likable character in the whole thing. There's not a single funny character. There's this guy, who's like the Jason expert, that body he's wearing, that's just me. That boy knows how to dress. He wears other people's bodies like folks wear suit. Who is he? Where did he come from? Son of a bitch. You remember me? Remember you from what? You, you've never been in one of these movies. We don't know who you are. Well, that makes me think of a little girl in a pink dress sticking a hot dog through a donut. Quite a character. 
I do like some of the kills in this. First of all, Jason gets killed in the first 10 minutes. So after they kill Jason, he comes back as a parasite who, who can possess people. So he possesses people and then kills them until the very end when they have a baby who is a Voorhees and Jason pops up through the floor with his mask on and everything. I guess that just comes with the package now. Anyway, entertainment value, uh, zero. Kills, two out of four. Jason Goes to Hell ends with a teaser. Oh look, Freddy Krueger drags Jason's mask into the ground. So that's a setup for a Freddy vs. Jason movie. The next movie isn't a Freddy vs. Jason movie, it's actually Jason X. They just didn't make a Freddy vs. Jason movie till later. We have like Uber Jason going around a spaceship killing people. It's the worst movie I've ever seen. I don't even ironically like this movie. It is so boring and stupid. <laughs> the Jason design is terrible, both of them. Even before he became this futuristic stupid Jason. The design of him before, that's not Jason. That's not what Jason looks like. Jason doesn't have this gray hair. And what's the Crystal Lake Research Facility? Really? The Crystal Lake Research Facility? What is that in Crystal Lake? His unique ability to regenerate lost and damaged tissue. Wait, and it lost just, and it damaged tissue? More... His unique ability to regenerate lost and damaged tissue. And... When has he ever recovered lost and damaged tissue? The acting and dialogue is awful. Hey, Slappy! Got a little something for you. Oh, wow. Gave her an upload. Imagine being a writer, and you're writing a script, and the original Earth is all destroyed, so humanity has to move to a new planet. What would you call this new planet? Not much longer, and we'll be at Earth 2. Earth 2! Two. Earth 2? Two? What happened to Earth 1? Most of the kills suck. The only one that doesn't suck is this one, where Jason freeze-dries this woman's head and then smashes it. <laughs> The rest of them are super bad. You can tell they put no thought or work into any of them. It's almost like they didn't even plan these kills. They were just like, they showed up on set and they're like, I don't know. And then you even have a copy of the sleeping bag kill from uh, part seven. And you know, the actor did that and everything. It looks great. And this one looks so bad. Two sacks of shit just being whacked against each other. One of them has like a little animatronic leg that kicks up. And you got this animatronic robot that this guy made. And she has like this dominatrix suit and she just shoots at Jason endlessly. It's so bad. Oh, what's going on? I'm giving Jason X a zero out of four on entertainment value a 1 out of 4 on the kills, and a 0 out of 2 on the nudity. Not only is there no nudity, there's this scene. Who's been a naughty little boy? I have. <laughs> so this movie is directed by Ronnie Yu, and I know nothing about Ronnie Yu. Seems like a nice guy. He had a lot of influence from like Hong Kong cinema and that kind of stuff, because the movie is very over the top. A lot of crazy, like, angles and camera work, and all of the kills are ridiculous and over the top, and all of the acting's over the top. Whenever someone gets hit, they go, like, flying. It's a very Hong Kong cinema-like thing, you know? And I take it he, he took a lot of influence from that and incorporated that into this Freddy vs. Jason movie. I actually don't think it's that bad. I think it's not one of the best ones. It has a very early 2000s feel. It's like it's a lot like The Covenant, if you've seen that video of mine, where it has like a lot of rock music. When Jason and Freddy are fighting, there's like this rock. <laughs> there's some really bad CGI in this movie as well. <laughs> nice. 
run of you thought it would be cool to have all the kills being like slow motion for this dramatic effect. It's so silly. Shit! This is bullshit! Killed Trey, killed his dad, and then took his own life? This is so fucking. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. You know why they sing that? Because that's when he comes for you. That might be the worst line of dialogue I've ever heard. The actual fights between Freddy and Jason are fun, but there's something missing. There really is just something missing. What makes Friday the 13th great is the simple premise. Um, guy in the woods in a camp kills a bunch of camp counselors. And even if it's that, the exact same thing every time, it's still better than this. Hey, Slappy! Partly the charm of Friday the 13th is that it's very 80s and that it's in that camp. The setting is part of the, the appeal. It's integral to the story of Jason Voorhees, the camp. And once you take the camp away, you take the 80s aesthetic away. All of the best Friday the 13th movies are Jason killing camp counselors in the camp. And you can try to make a modern day spin on it. You can try to put Jason in Manhattan and space because you're running out of ideas. And so yeah, this movie's got a lot of really good kills and it's pretty entertaining. Uh, I like that this guy's dad looks like Alex Jones. <laughs> we have to talk. The kills I'll give a three out of four and the entertainment value I'll give it a two out of four. The remake, 2009, produced by Michael Bay. They go back to the basics, yeah, where it's modern day, sure, but we're back to the camp. Back in the woods, Jason, you know, we have his origin story all over again. It's a modern day studio version of Friday the 13th, and that's why it's boring. It's got jump scares, it looks fine, everything's dark and brown and yellow. It's fine, I guess, it's competent. But there's no style to it, it's not entertaining. All of the characters have this obnoxious Michael Bay sense of humor where it's just juvenile and stupid and... You like that bitch? You know you do. The kills are pretty bland. They look fine. They're not creative though. They, because they wanted to do like a more gritty, realistic version of Friday the 13th. And so all the kills are like, yeah, it's realistic, I guess. I guess you could really do that if you were super strong. But who cares? Who cares about seeing a, a realistic, modern-day, brown, douchebag version of Friday the 13th? So yeah, I, I gotta give the nudity a 2 out of 2. I mean, but the kills are 1 out of 4. And the, the entertainment value is a 0. This movie's boring. They were talking about making another Friday the 13th movie recently, but after the Rings movie underperformed, they canceled that. And I'm glad they didn't go through with it, because as much as I love Friday the 13th, it's a product of its time. It's funny, and I recommend you watch at least part 2 to 7. Uh, if you really want to see part 1, you can. But we're never going to get those movies again. We're never going to be in that time again. And it's better to just let it die. How the 2010s had, like, Paranormal Activity, and the 2000s had Saw, the 80s had Friday the 13th. Oh, shit. Well, I'm gonna have to cut it off here.